Happy New Year everybody, my name is Alex Lee and I am from DesignC. It was a remarkable year for us hitting a new threshold of achieving our Silver Play Button Award and also hitting a new milestone of having one of our videos touching the 1 million views baseline. Definitely one year that means a whole lot to us and not to mention how grateful and thankful we are for if it's not for every single one of you, this amazing journey would not have been made possible. Thank you everyone, and today's episode, Design Seed has now traveled to the southern region to explore more astounding contents to boost our channel's content for your viewing pleasure. Let us present to you the Denai Sepulo. Sometimes I joke around and say I can touch the leaves of the big tree. So I, I told my friend I still live on trees and I'll shoot pictures and show it to them. I sit there every day for my tea or maybe I read messages on my phone. I play with my granddaughter. She will run around on the green patch. So from there I can also see my wife upstairs. So we use the entire space as one big family activity. The Naisapulo is located in the heart of Johor Bahru, designed by architect Razin Mahmud, founder of Razin Architects. The house is located on a rectangular site that ascends 8 meters from the access road to the near boundary. My name is Razin, founder of Razin Architects. Uh, we are based in Johor Bahru. Today, I'll be sharing with you the journey that we went through in the process of making this Denai Tent House. When we get the chance to do this house, we wanted this to be a showcase of a true tropical house. So the best example is what our forefathers have done before, which is traditional Malay house, which is built to suit the climate and to suit the culture of the people living in this area. So I actually designed the sequence or the, the planning of the house with intention to somewhat recreate the experience of going through a Malay house. The principal entrance to the property is via a stair from the car porch to what the plan refers to as the lobby or in Razin's words, the Anjong and Surambi. If you go into a traditional Malay house, you will go through the Anjong first as a place where you greet your visitors. And then we move on to the Rumah Ibu, which is the main house, which is normally enclosed. And then there will be Rumah Dapo, which is where the activity of cooking and preparing food, which is more private. There's always this floor to ceiling openings in a traditional Malay house. We call it Jendela Labo or Tingkap Labo where you open up and there could be a fenestration that you get natural ventilation into the spaces. So that is the intention in building the Nye House. A very modern, contemporary looking architecture without forgetting the need to ensure that it is suitable for the climate. The spatial choreography references what is commonly found in a Malay kampong house where non-family members may only access as far as the surambi, which is addressed as the foyer. The foyer consists of a formal living area and 10-seater dining table that are contiguous and open on both sides with no partition or walls whatsoever, making the semi-outdoor space fully ventilated at all times. Separated with a corner foldable sliding glass door and different floor finish, the main house, which consists of the living hall and the kitchen area, is set aside private. With the foldable sliding doors shut, this initially fully open space is now convertible into an enclosed and private section for the home. The architecture is designed in a U-shaped form which is surrounding a 16-meter long pool. This was to ensure that every corner of the house gets to enjoy the heart of the home, in which this case would be the center courtyard 
where tall trees, the sound of cascading waters, the glimpse of the architecture reflected in the pool, and shadows of the leaves from the full-grown leopard trees are the ever-changing sight that the family enjoys living with. The land originally is uh, sloping land. The difference between the back and the front, uh, the roadside is about 8 meters. So what I did is to cut on one side and then fill up the front side. So when I do that, from the front road, you see as if the house is like a three-story house. In actual fact, it's just a two-story house. But since the car is parked at the front and it's a semi-basement, so you do see a car porch in front. But that level is mainly for storage and the cars. Because we are elevated like three meters from the roadside, so we managed to maximize the green area, the lawn area that we have in the middle of the house. So I can have this open concept. I have no enclosure in this, this gas lounge, but I don't have to worry about people looking in into my uh, lawn area. So that's the beauty about elevating the main living area. The intention was to get as much opening as possible without losing the, the privacy that one would need. There are two rooms that are worth mentioning actually. One is the master bedroom, placed at the back of the land where I will get total privacy. And the best thing I like is that it's very close to nature because I get to see the entire lawn and the pool. And also I get to see everything that happens in the house. I get to see that the TV has not been switched off yet. Or I get to see that dinner is ready so they don't have to shout for me to come downstairs. The second bedroom is facing west so we cover it up with uh, pivoted timber louvers. One thing I like about that room is that we hide away the toilet and the wardrobe. I put in this full-size mirror. Uh, it actually helps to somewhat give this illusion of a bigger space. But what's interesting is that it also reflects the louvers and the openings I have on the other side. So it looks like that room has three side openings. So it looks quite spacious actually. My bathroom has this huge, almost floor-to-ceiling opening, sliding doors. I can leave it open all the time. What I did was to build a tall wall around it so that I get sunlight, I get uh, natural ventilation, but I don't lose my privacy. It's like I have natural light and I can even put plants. So I would say I have bathroom with a view. The beauty of the architecture is how its simplicity creates such great impact. With a basic form of construction converging with steel structures and implementation of solid wood louvers bolted to the basic shell of the building, this coherent composition has created an influential character and identity for the architecture facade. The louvers is actually the main feature of the design. Without the louvers, the house is one big concrete box. Not only it is used as shading device, but it's also used as privacy screen. Uh, I don't have to draw down the curtains because you know all I have these tiny openings in between the timber louvers and it, it allows air to come in. So I feel it should be a common treatment to facades in tropical climate where you can have your privacy and you can still have natural ventilation, natural air to come in into your spaces. The materials for the house are actually quite basic. We use concrete as structure, brick infill walls that is plastered on both sides. In most of the spaces, uh, I try to leave the concrete in its raw state. We don't uh, plaster or we don't paint the ceilings, even the columns. We make sure that the formwork uh, done right so that when you remove the foam board the concrete is there looking in its uh, original state. Uh, we use merbau for timber flooring and that was the time I get this idea of using the same piece of timber for my louvers. When I built the house, I was also eyeing for the land next door because it was a dream for me to work from home, to have you know, an office right next to my house. So the moment we got the land, we renovated the existing building as, and turned it into an office. And then a few months after that, I built the spiral staircase 
that connects from my master bedroom to come down and go straight to the office. It is also probably like a capsule statement to the design. It becomes a conversation piece. So when people hear, how, why do you do that? You know, that's my highway to the office. <laughs> uh, when we planned for the meeting room, we wanted the pantry to be part of the meeting room as well. So we placed the pantry right to the meeting room. It's actually quite convenient. Even outside the meeting room, there's this open space, which is like an extension of the pantry. It's also multi-purpose. I can have meetings outside as well during lunchtime or during tea time. That space is used as a gathering place where they have their tea and, and lunches. All the trees that you see in this area was actually planted. We brought it in, we select the species that we think it is suitable for the design, that will complement the architecture. Where we have trees planted under transparent roof. So we planted leopard tree and uh, ficus. So apparently it has grown very well and I was very pleased with that. The De Nice Below is a modern contemporary home that doesn't stray away from its functions of the generic Malay house. Looking at how the family members live their lives within the premises, you can find a resemblance of the Malay house culture built in modernization. On the ground floor, we have this family area which is next to the dry kitchen, which has a big island table. So that is our main activity center. You can see that next to the living is actually one a row of huge sliding doors which we slide open most of the time. The Denai house is most interesting for the manner in which it translates the functions of a generic Malay house into modern architecture. Razin refers to these areas by their Malay names Anjong and Sarambi with an adjoining pankin that is, alludes to a raised timber deck found in a traditional kampong house where family would sit on the floor to prepare and eat food. It is about reinterpreting Malay architecture, about taking the spirit of a Malay house where privacy is of the utmost importance, the private spaces are all upstairs, the ground floor is about openness, without permanent partitions, with natural ventilation. Ultimately, Razin wants to show that architecture is about experiencing lost authenticity. Sometimes it's quite sad when people come to me and they prescribe what they want. You don't do that with doctors. You don't go to doctors, okay, uh, I'm sick but I want this medicine and that medicine, don't give me anything else. You listen to doctors. I hope someday that people out there will listen to their designers as well because we spend time to learn in school about design. Uh, we don't just do design actually, we are problem solvers. So it's important for us or even any designers to understand the real problem, the real issues. Building a house is not just about building four walls and put a roof on it. We actually try to understand the needs and the lifestyle of the client and each house should be different actually. So we spend time to, in trying to understand the, the real needs of client and uh, what's important is for us to explore and try to provide the best solution. I have to agree with what Razin shared earlier. Design should not be dictated or restricted leaving the idea development to the professionals who devoted their careers and life to, only then you will achieve a realization of a home that suits your lifestyle. My name is Alex Lee and I am from Design Seed. Please subscribe to us and click on the notification bell to continue supporting us in building more inspiring contents of such. Check out Instagram and Facebook too. We've been posting some interesting sneak peeks and design tips there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week.